You ever eat a Cinnabon? You have to take a nap halfway through. It's kind of generous calling that a bun. It's the size of a beanbag chair. Uh, should I sit in it or eat it? Hey, I could sit in it and eat it. Oh, this is sticky without pants on. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I am using Jim Gaffigan's stand-up as an excuse to make cinnamon rolls. I wasn't quite sure what to put on the table in this first shot, so I'm going to gesture towards these cinnamon sticks, and then we're going to move on. I also want to do things a little bit differently this week. I made two batches, the first of which I screwed up royally. Instead of doing what I usually do and throwing away the footage, I thought it might be fun to learn from my mistakes. So you can see how a few tiny tweaks can make the difference in a recipe turning out perfectly. Let's start with the cinnamon roll dough. Into the bowl of the stand mixer, we are combining three and one quarter ounces of granulated sugar, a half teaspoon of salt, and three ounces of soft butter. We're then going to transfer this into our glass mixing bowl because we want the audience to be able to see what we're up to. And then we're mixing this slowly at first, ramping up to medium high speed until fluffy, about one minute. And then we're scraping down the sides of the bowl, adding one egg and the zest of one lemon, optionally. And then we're creaming that together on medium high speed for about two minutes until soft, ribbony, and creamy. And then we're adding everything else, 16 ounces of bread flour. This is cool because the flour can act as a barrier between the whole packet of instant yeast that we're going to add and the salt that we added earlier, along with eight ounces of buttermilk. And then using the paddle attachment, we are mixing this on medium low speed until just combined, cleaning off our paddle attachment and affixing dough hooks. We are then using the dough hook to knead the dough for a downright impressive 10 whole minutes on medium speed. The dough should be very, very soft and tacky, but not sticky, kind of like a really soft pizza dough. You should be able to handle it without having to wash your hands afterwards. I mean, wash your hands before and after doing this. Obviously, I mean more in a philosophical sense. Once you've literally and philosophically washed your hands, we're placing this into an oiled bowl, one large enough so that it can double in size over the next two hours. We are covering it, walking away, and then walking back to reveal, wow, this thing has doubled in size. So to get to work on this dough, we need to generously oil our work surface, along with our hands and our rolling pin. This is a really sticky dough and we don't want it sticking to nothing. Once you've gotten to know your rolling pin, we're turning out the dough onto our oiled work surface and giving it a little bit of a knead. Not totally necessary, but we're punching out all the air and it just feels really good. And then we are rolling out this soft enriched dough to maybe 14 by 18 inches or so. Then we are generously sprinkling it with a mixture of half a cup of white sugar, one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon, and a quarter cup of brown sugar. And then we're starting to roll this guy up. This little known fact is why this is referred to as a cinnamon roll. We are then placing our proverbial cinnamon roll seam side down, trimming off the ends, and then dividing into 12 even pieces. You want to mark this up before you cut it so everybody turns out even. And then I'd like to introduce you guys to a little something I call mistake number one. That's right, to start things off, I arranged my cinnamon rolls in too small a baking dish, so they were already touching before I even proofed them, which we're doing next. We're gonna cover this and let it proof at room temperature for about 90 minutes, or until your rolls have grown in size by about 50%. And now they are ready for baking, so we've got our oven preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, but first we're gonna give these guys a brush down with butter. This is gonna add some more color and some more butter flavor. How can you go wrong? Into the oven they go for 25 to 35 minutes, or until they register 100 90 degrees Fahrenheit internally. So as you can see, these guys grew unevenly and into each other, which leads me to... Mistake number two was to cut around the buns. My thought was that this would make them easier to separate down the line. It did, but it also kind of pinched the dough and ruined the texture around the edges. So next up here, we need to make cream cheese frosting. Into the bowl of a stand mixer, we are sifting two cups of powdered sugar. I'm going by volume and not weight because frosting is very, very forgiving. And then we're adding room temperature, eight ounces of cream cheese and four ounces of butter. We're starting on medium low speed and then ramping up the power to cream together until creamy. But if you ask me, a little bit too creamy, so I'm going to thin this out with a little bit of heavy cream. You can also use whole milk until I get a texture that I think is going to drape over the buns rather than sit on top. Speaking of which, it's time to frost our buns, which leads me to mistake number three. That's right, I let these cinnamon rolls cool almost completely before removing from the baking dish and frosting. So as you can see, the frosting remained totally solid. What resulted was a truly delicious cinnamon roll, but one that didn't really look up to par and whose texture was just a little bit off. So let us go back and right these wrongs. Let's start by oiling and parchment papering a larger baking dish that is going to more grimly accommodate all 12 rolls. As you can see, they got about a half inch of breathing room between them. That's exactly what we want. We're going to cover and prove 
proof for 70 to 90 minutes until they've grown by 50%. They've grown into each other a little bit, but that's okay. They're not trying to force each other out of the casserole like last time. Into the oven for the same amount of time, 25 to 35 minutes, until golden brown and delicious. And then we are frosting almost immediately. I let these cool for no more than five minutes. This way, the frosting is gonna soften and fill all the nooks and crannies as we extradite the entire affair onto a cooling rack. By doing this, instead of cutting the buns, we can pull them apart as God intended. And there we go, that's what I picture when I think cinnamon rolls. The last batch was still absolutely delicious, but this one was more worthy of being part of the Clean Plate Club. And when I say Clean Plate Club, this time I mean that quite literally. Hey guys, so I've just introduced a new feature to my channel that is channel memberships. For $4.95 a month, you can get access to special emojis, badges, exclusive community posts, and exclusive episodes like this, Homemade Hot Pockets. Patreon supporters, you are still getting the exact same perks for $5 a month. Thank you guys so much for your love and support. I'll see you next week.